this rather impulsive uh, auction purchase for this balance kind of led me down an interesting path. We're at the point right now where the video was intended to end. I just wanted to do a simple update video on the new props that I have uh, acquired for this video since January and do some very simple sound explorations with the with the mortar and with the nails and uh, the tinkering with putting this together and so originally that's all I wanted to do so you might consider this the end of the simple show and tell type video and everything that comes next uh, shall we say bonus material because one question was still nagging at me a little bit and it was exacerbated by the fact that I was somewhat impulsive by bidding on this auction. There was still a nagging question. And the question was, even though this is a perfectly handsome and uh, charming little piece, and I'm very glad to have it, Is this actually the kind of balance that would have been used by a pharmacist or a druggist to compound a prescription? It obviously doesn't matter for the video the hand motions, the, the manipulating of the weights and the powders, that's all going to look just fine. And the sounds that would be attached to dealing with this balance, those are all going to be fine. But the way my brain works, I wanted to at least understand, is it correct? Is it legitimate? Is it the right kind of thing? Since I did not really get any research done before I pulled the trigger on this auction, I still had no idea the difference between this scale and that scale. There are so many different varieties so many similarities, but a lot of differences, too. The open question was, was this something that would be used for that purpose? And that's where this, uh, this video tonight turns into a bit of, a, of an episode of uh, History Detectives that show you might have seen on uh, PBS if you're in the United States. Well, how do I go about trying to figure out if this style of scale would be used to compound medicines? Well, one thing that I did learn somewhat quickly is that you really can't use the auction sites that you typically use to buy these things as any sort of a of an informational reference for what they really are or what they should be used for because those listings are put together by the people who are selling the items right and in most cases, those people don't know 
what they have. In fact, I have observed that in most cases, if you have an antique balance like this that looks like this, everyone pretty much calls this an apothecary scale. And if you stick the phrase apothecary scale into a search on something like eBay, you'll get a really large number of scales for sale. But the rub is that the phrase apothecary scale doesn't really mean anything. It's not, it's not a phrase that you'll find in trade catalogs and things like that. I think it's just kind of a more or less a fantasy phrase that we attach to antique scales like this without knowing any better. No, I got the impression fairly quickly that probably the best thing to try to find would be trade catalogs from the period, right? Trade publications or product catalogs from the late 1800s and early 1900s to try to understand what the original intent was. What did they call these things when they were made and when they were originally being sold? I didn't feel like I could trust anything from any references from modern times. I wanted to try to get back to something original. And in trying to do that, I came up with three interesting artifacts that I wanted to share with you today. If you'll indulge me. And then perhaps together we can look at these things and you can help me decide if this balance is indeed something that I could uh, use with a feeling of period appropriateness in my apothecary video. So I've got some pieces of paper here. Now this first piece is the cover sheet from a, uh, a trade catalog. This catalog is from John Taylor and Company, importers, dealers, and manufacturers of assayers materials, mine and mill supplies, school, physical, and chemical apparatus. And this catalog is from 1899. So, the biggest and first item in the list, assayers materials. Are you familiar with this word, assayers? An assayer, or to assay something, is to analyze something to essentially figure out what it's made of. And in this context, we're talking about ore, O-R-E, ore. The, uh, the Henry Trimner Company was founded in 1844 in Philadelphia. Four years later, in 1848, there was a bit of a hubbub that started out in California, if you'll recall. It's called the Gold Rush. 
and then some 300,000 people or so all flocked to California to try to strike it rich, prospecting and uh, panning and mining for gold. And uh, as supply and demand would have it, when you, uh, when you create that kind of a demand, all those people working with gold, or trying to anyway, it will generate a bit of an industry that pops up around that to support it. And a big piece of that industry was this, the role of the assayer. An assayer, his job is to analyze ore to try to figure out if there's any precious metals in the ore. And so this John Taylor and company was all about providing products to the assayers trade and the mining industry to support the gold rush. So you might imagine that uh, scales might be involved in this industry. In fact, certainly, if you were a scale business in the last half of the 1800s and the early 1900s, you can imagine that a good portion of your product line would be made for or suited to the task of the assayer. So this is our first exhibit to try to track down what the intended purpose of our little balance is. To our patrons, this is the uh, second sheet of the uh, trade catalog, and you will you will have to forgive me, gentle viewers. You'll have to forgive a very short diversion here because you will learn one thing about me, and that is that I have a burning, unabiding love for the way the English language was used in advertising from the 1800s, or if not advertising, general promotion, such as the words on this page. I just absolutely love the way this kind of stuff was written. And when, when you say these kinds of words out loud, I think there's a bit of a, a time machine aspect, a bit of a transportative aspect that kind of takes you back to, uh, to those times. I'm, I'm certainly not going to read this entire page, but I just wanted to pick out a couple of sentences that, that just, just are wonderful. In fact, I think I need to, uh, I think I need to do a soft-spoken reading video where it just reads, we just read pocket watch advertising from the 1800s just to get that language, uh, in our ears. I think that would be fantastic. I love that stuff. I apologize. I should have highlighted some of these, uh, these beforehand. I'll just read a couple of them. All articles will be furnished as low as the same quality can be had in the market. Staple chemicals in quantity will be quoted at net prices. Our customers will have the benefit of the lowest prices as the market fluctuates. Our crucibles, glass, porcelain ware, etc. 
we import direct by sail vessel at lowest freights from the largest and best known manufacturers and can sell on most favorable terms. All goods packed with the utmost care by experienced hands. Gosh, I love that. We think all will be found fully up to the growing wants of the miner, assayer, chemist, and schools. One of the best ones is the is the closing s sentence here. Having enjoyed the confidence of the mining community for over 40 years, we may confidently promise that any orders entrusted to us will be filled with fidelity and dispatch with the best quality of goods in our line. Oh, gosh, I love that so much. But anyway, on to some product. So take a look at what we have here. This is a page about gold scales. And in particular, take a look at this number 1388. I'll bring it close to the camera for a moment. Look familiar? So what does the page tell us about 1388? Let's get our pointer. So you'll notice there are three different manufacturers here. Here's some Trumners. It's a company called German. And uh, 1388 here it's by a brand called Union Scales. Brass beams, indicator points upward, as ours does. Movable pans on polished walnut box. Scale can be taken apart and packed in drawer of box. These scales are very accurate and useful for weighing small quantities of gold dust. And they come with some weights. And there are three different models listed here. The model 0, 1, and 2. The difference is the beam length, the diameter of the pans, and of course the cost. The model 2 here has a 5 and 3 quarter inch beam. The balance that I bought is actually even slightly smaller than this because it has a five and one quarter inch beam. So it seems that according to this distributor anyway, in 1899, this style of scale was intended for the use of weighing gold dust. So, what does that do? What does that do to us? Does this, does this scuttle our plans? Do we, do we now discover that I bought a scale completely unsuitable for the, the purpose of compounding and dosing medicines? Does this one data point tell us this? Well, we have to be cautious, right? Remember, this trade catalog is tailored for the mining and the assaying uh, industry. 
if if this type of a scale also happens to be good for the physician or the druggist, that's nice, but they're not likely to talk about that in a trade catalog such as this because it's the wrong audience, right? So this is a very good data point for this style of scale. They call them scales in this sheet. But it's just one data point, and I'm not sure that it tells us definitively that, that I bought either the right style or the wrong style of balance. So let's see what other what other information we came up with. Here we have another page from a trade catalog. This one is called The Calkins Company. They were based in Los Angeles. And I believe the year of this um, catalog was 1909. So I'll draw your attention to the figure at the top. this model, or this figure 666. And if we look at the table, we see that this style of balance is described down here. You will see here that it looks like these are Trimner balances, like ours. You'll also note that the model numbers are the same as the union balances we were just looking at. And these beam lengths are just the same as the union scales we were looking at. This very likely tells us that the union scales we just looked at are in fact Trumner scales that were manufactured for another brand. That sort of thing happened in pocket watches all the time, and it's no surprise that it would happen here, too. So let's see what this catalog says that this kind of scale would be used for. This catalog calls this scale a pulp balance. So we have to stop right there and understand what a pulp balance is before we read on. This again has to do with the, the trade of the assayer. Again, the, the assayer's job was to try to analyze ore to figure out if it had anything valuable in it. And one way that that was done was by weighing pulp. Pulp was created by pulverizing a small um, sample of ore and then mixing it with water to create kind of a slush. That's called pulp, ore pulp. And then you you fill a graduated cylinder of a specific volume with that ore pulp, and then you weigh the cylinder. So when you have the mass of the cylinder and you know the volume of pulp that's inside, you can get a density of the pulp, and by comparing that density to the known density of the rock or what have you, 
you can tell whether it has a, uh, a quantity of precious metals in it. And a balance that you would measure the pulp with is called a pulp balance, and that's what we apparently have here. And the description goes on to say, these are cheap but reliable scales for pulp or drug weighing and are well adapted to physicians' offices. Hmm, what is this? This catalog is suggesting that this kind of balance might be good for not only the assayer's trade, but perhaps the physician as well. That's a glimmer of hope for us. I wonder why they say, well adapted to physicians' offices. It's possible that by this time, physicians were not compounding a lot of their own medicines anymore. The druggists were doing that, but perhaps some physicians still needed to occasionally weigh out dosages in their own offices, and in those cases they didn't need as fine an instrument as, as the apothecary might use. Perhaps a portable, smaller unit like this is something they might continue to have in their office for that purpose. Maybe that's what they mean by this. So that's Exhibit 2, which gives us a glimmer of hope. So let's go on to the third and last item. found a, um, I found a listing on the internet for a, for a copy of a Tremner product catalog that was up for auction on eBay, I think. The auction was, uh, already complete, of course, but the web page that I found had the collection of photographs taken of the catalog that were used for the sale. There were only 11 photographs of the catalog used for the auction, but one of the photographs just happened to be of this pair of pages here, page 24 and 25 which shows a selection of what they called, at the time, prescription balances. Now it seems to me that a balance with the name prescription balance is surely exactly the thing that I would have wanted to find for my apothecary video. Surely this is far removed from the assayer's trade, and this is firmly in the pharmaceutical industry, right? Well, there are some examples here. Here are two that are enclosed in wooden and glass boxes. This is to keep drafts and air currents from uh, disturbing the measurements. And here's a prescription scale that's uh, in the box scale configuration. But then we have this one. Now we can tell right away from the prices compared to what we were looking at before that this is a much more expensive scale. This is a much more finely crafted instrument. It says, the balance is made of brass and lacquered 
and is mounted on French polished mahogany box with drawer. Nickel pans, adjusting screws on end of beam, screw leveling feet and level on box. So you can clearly do some things with a, a finer instrument like this than you can do with the one I bought. The pointer points down in this case instead of up, and the, the scale is here at the bottom. With a much longer pointer like that, that means that it will register down here much smaller um, out-of-balance conditions of the beam, which makes for a more precise instrument. It talks about these adjusting screws. That would be here and here. This means that these have these little threaded screws that could be moved either in towards the center or away from the center by turning them to fine-tune the beam to balance it out and make it completely level and neutral before you put anything in the pans. And then we have this adjustable foot that allows you to level the box. All of these adjustments are to the goal of getting as precise a reading as possible. So it's clearly a better instrument than the simple balance that we have here. But what I'm encouraged by is that the general form of the balance, the stirrup style pan hangers, the simple beam, it's not a box style, it's not what well, it can be in a style like this, but it doesn't have to be, as we can see from this choice. It seems to me that this piece of data here shows that while this is a much more accurate device, it is in the style of our balance. And that's enough for me. With these three pieces of information, but particularly this one, this, uh, this brings me to the point where I think I'm perfectly happy to use the Trimner Model 9 balance in our upcoming apothecary video. I think we'll end up making a great visual and functional contribution to that. As soon as I assemble a formulary and maybe some bits of uh, glassware, and then of course practicing some techniques on the balance and working with measuring and dosing, I should be ready to uh, put that together. I hope so, anyway. Later in the year, maybe by the summer? I'm not sure. This brings us to the end of our little show and tell and sound exploration and our ASMR episode of PBS's History Detectives. I really hope you've uh, 
you've enjoyed uh, this time together today. Thank you again for being here, and thank you again for your support. Take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I very much look forward to seeing you in the next video. We will see you soon.